Hey, I'm Brian Van, SportBikeTrackier.com, and today we're going to do a product slash ride review on the all-new Scorpion EX01R Air Full Face Helmet. The Scorpion EXO-1R Air helmet is a brand new, from the ground up, full face sport helmet intended for, obviously you want to street ride in it, no problem. Track days and road racing is really what this was built for. If you're a MotoGP fan or a World Superbike fan, odds are you've already seen Quattraro or Bautista out there riding in this very same helmet during that development process, okay? This is going to replace their EXO-R2000 which was a previous attempt at building you know, their first real high-end helmet. While that was a good helmet, this is leaps and bounds above that. I had the opportunity to ride in this for two days with our friends from Sport Bike Track Time at Barber Motorsports Park in October of 2019. This helmet won't be available for sale here in the U.S. until about February of 2020. Of course, when I had the chance, I jumped at it. I'm a gear geek, no doubt about it. I have more helmets than I can even count at this point. And I always love the opportunity to check a new one out. Two full days I spent in this, with the exception of one session where I roar a Shark Race R Pro that I'm really familiar with, just to give myself a really good baseline to compare this to. Let's just start off with how I felt about it. Number one, it's super light. This is the ECE model that I have here. This one was literally three pounds. As I understand it, the DOT homologation, it'll be a DOT ECE helmet here for the US, is going to be about two tenths of a pound heavier. We'll fact check that when the full production helmets arrive here in February, but still gonna be super light. The pricing on this helmet is also very affordable. The solid colors start at $399. The race replica graphics go as high as $549. They also have some value adds that come with the helmet. You can see I've got the dark smoke shield installed on it right now. That's what I wrote in. It comes with a clear spare shield bag, as well as a pin lock Max Vision insert. The weather I rode in down there was a little to the cool side. It wasn't cold, it wasn't hot. It performed flawlessly. Great ventilation, great aerodynamics, excellent field of vision. I didn't have any fogging issues with the helmet, even without using the pin lock insert. So I think this would really only be necessary for the most extreme of conditions. Let's talk about sizing. I measure 58 centimeters on the money, intermediate oval head shape. I wear a medium in almost every helmet out there. This helmet is a medium. The fit and feel this helmet gave me was excellent. The intermediate oval head shape, I think they hit it right on the money. It's also important to note, this offers the inflatable cheek pads. You simply reach up under here, depress that bladder. It inflates the cheek pads on both sides to help dial to fit in to best suit you. That is a really cool feature, especially when you're on the racetrack. That allows you to snug it up just a little bit if you prefer that tighter fit from your helmet. Okay, let's give you an idea of how big the exterior shell is. This helmet is available in three different shell sizes. Extra small through medium are gonna use the smallest. Large uses its own shell, and then extra large up to 3X would then use their own shell. Each of the helmets I have on the table here are in size medium. We've got our ARFA 11 Pro, obviously our EXO1R Air, and then a Corsair X helmet. And you can clearly see that out of all the helmets, this is probably the smallest exterior shell and the sleekest design, most narrow of all three helmets. Ventilation on the helmet was excellent. I wouldn't say it is the most vented helmet out there, but it is more than adequate. They manage it through a large intake vent here on the top. We have an intake vent here at the chin. There is an airflow adjuster here on the back side, right here. There's a little switch up or down that diverts the airflow from being up onto the shield and allowing some of it to come into the mouth area. So if you want some airflow in that area, you're gonna have to adjust that switch. Exhaust vents up here on the top, back here through the diffuser. The shield uses a centrally located shield lock, which was very effective. All the helmets that I use, I gotta tell you, I really am starting to gravitate towards those 
which have that centrally located lock. They seem to seal up the best and they're just simply the easiest to use. To remove the shield, push forward on the trigger and pull out. Like so, very simple system. This ratchet mechanism is something they've used for several years. It works great, super reliable. Fully removable interior. There are customizable pieces available. If you want to dial in the fit of the helmet, you can get different cheek pads to adjust that fit. We'll have a chart for that on the website. With that said, remember, okay, and this is just a sticker. If you don't want it on there, it just comes right off, okay? This is that air fit system. In my mind, if you get the helmet and say it's just a touch to the loose side and the cheek pads, instead of replacing the cheek pads, what I would do is I would simply inflate the... Uh, air fit system and use that to compensate. You can see this helmet uses a large neck roll. The neck roll and the cheek pads are all one piece. It comes complete with a chin curtain. The wind noise on this is very low, especially considering the amount of ventilation that it offers. They did a great job dialing that back and one way to get there is to really try hard to seal it up around the neck. To remove the chin curtain, you just grab it by the edge like so. It's pretty standard stuff. Pull that out. If you want to ride without it, you can do so, of course, to remove the cheek pads. And these are emergency release. If medical personnel you know, are on the scene and say you're unconscious, they need to get it off, they can simply grab it by these tabs and just pull everything off. If you're just going to service the helmets, what you want to do is you want to get your fingers in between the back of the cheek pad and the EPS of the helmet to release the snaps. Once you've done that, just kind of pull and rotate a little bit. Out it comes, give you a look at that. Quality is excellent. There are some reflective pieces here that are stitched into the neck roll of the helmet. To remove the top pad, we've got two snaps here at the back. Come up to the front and release the clips around the brow of the helmet. Give you a look at the liner. Antibacterial, antimicrobial stuff, super comfortable, feels great against the skin. You can see the quality here with their interior. Looking inside the helmet, notice the EPS, how it's all channeled out. That's going to do a few different things. One, it helps to enhance the ventilation. Two, those are also going to act as kind of a crumple zone. We've seen this before from shark helmets. When you have an impact, right, instead of the entire EPS having to compress, you know, these can kind of act as individual bumpers to help manage that energy. If you want to install a communicator system for street riding, it has the pockets already built in and molded in. They're large enough. It's going to accommodate most any of the aftermarket universal systems with ease. Here's a close-up look at the air bladder inflator. Here is the little button to release that. You can see the bladders here on each side. The way these are located here on the EPS of the helmet, they're down low, a little bit up here into the jawbone area. These also can really help to dial out wind noise. You put a couple of pumps into that, and it really helps to seal the helmet up nicely in that area. So if you're sensitive to wind and road noise, that's a great way to help dial that out. In conclusion, this helmet is excellent. It provides a tremendous amount of value. When I compare it to its direct competition, which is going to be the HJC Arfa 11 Pro, also a helmet that I like. Where this one's better than that one is in the aerodynamic department. This one simply has better aerodynamics than the Arfa 11 Pro. I still like the Arfa 11 Pro. I still think it's a good helmet, okay? They're both lightweight. They both have a very similar amount of ventilation. I would give this one just a little up in quality. I think they did just a little bit better job there. They both come with free tinted shields, which is nice, but boy, I gotta tell you, that additional aerodynamic performance is a real win. Now let's go a step further and let's look at high-end helmets, those costing seven, $800 and up. I think this thing is good enough that it is worth considering before you pull the trigger on one that costs two or three times as much. I think you're gonna get a reasonable, you know, the protection is going to be right there. And the performance is also going to be right there, enough so 
it's worth considering the opportunity of saving hundreds of dollars on your next full face race helmet. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments section of this video. I answer all those myself. And like I said, I already spent two days riding this bad boy, so I have a pretty good idea of how it performs.